The Audio Drama Initiative presents Closing the Distance. Hi, I'm Tani O'Dell. This episode of Closing the Distance deals with loss. Not the loss of lives, which we're all trying desperately to prevent, but the loss of moments that will never come again. Graduations, baby showers, birthday parties, first dates that might have happened and now never will. We're being told we should accept the situation, tell ourselves the canceling of events and celebrations and nights out with our friends is for the greater good. Maybe this is true, but that doesn't mean hearts aren't being broken and scrapbook memories aren't being lost. Emily and Josh are a young couple living in Brooklyn. He was a chef and she was an actress before their industries were shut down by the pandemic. They were supposed to get married today. The nuptials had to be canceled. Here's acclaimed songwriter and YouTube star Casey Brevis and Broadway delight Leslie Margarita to give you a glimpse inside their wedding day. Okay, um, come on out. I'm ready. God, Emily, you look beautiful. Uh, I did the best I could. I mean, I have no white clothes. It was either this old sundress or my slutty nurse costume from last Halloween. Save that for the honeymoon. <laughs> Where's that gonna be? I was thinking the couch. Mm. Oh, well, how do you like my veil? It's great. What did you make it from? I cut up a lace camisole and sewed it onto a string of fake crystal beads. I didn't know you could sew. No. One of the wardrobe assistants taught me last year when I was doing that road tour 42nd Street. She was hemming some tuxedo pants in the dressing room, and I mentioned how I didn't even know how to sew on a button, so she taught me during tech. And your bouquet? Mm-hmm. I drew flowers on printer paper with highlighters. Then I found an old stash of straws from Shake Shack and a couple packets of chopsticks in a kitchen drawer to use for stems. You're a genius. <laughs> oh, here. I made you a boutonniere. Let me tape it to your lapel. You look very handsome in your suit, by the way. Thank you. Should we open the champagne? Already? What are we waiting for? <laughs> uh, I hope you're okay with Fig Newtons for our wedding cake. I hope you're okay with an unemployed sous chef for a groom. That wasn't our original deal. Are you kidding me? I am thrilled. Everyone's unemployed now. But I live with a man who can make a delicious meal out of a can of chickpeas, a jar of olives, and some raisins. <laughs> And don't forget my grilled cheese with gummy bears, mm. or my salami and cornflake melt on naan. What's the matter? You look sad. No sadness allowed tonight. I can't help thinking about it. About my fairy tale dress I'll never get to wear. About all the planning we've done for the past year. About all the fun we were going to have. About our family. And our friends who bought plane tickets and can't get their money back? And what about our parents? Think about how much money they spent. They paid for everything. The venue, the caterer. The cake, the flowers. The DJ, the photographer. It's so awful. They can't get their deposits back. And at a time when everyone is losing their jobs... My dad told me the company he works for is closing. Forever. They're going out of business. And all they're giving their employees is a week's salary. He's also going to lose his pension. I mean, his, his whole retirement is gone. Just like that. Why didn't you tell me? Well, I didn't want to depress you. I know things are just as bad for your family I'm, I'm scared, Josh. I'm scared about what's going to happen to them and what's going to happen to us. 
We have no money. We have no food. What else is new? It's not funny. Hey, come here. I want to go home. I want to see my mom. I know. Today was supposed to be the happiest day of my life. People say that about wedding days, but I think they're overrated. You're just trying to make me feel better. No, I'm not. Think about all the stresses we're going to avoid by not having a wedding. Keeping your Trump-supporting, rifle-toting Kentucky grandfather away from my rainbow-wearing, Bay Area, Bernie-supporting uncle. (laughs) Or my cousin Ashley complaining all night about how she had to spend all this money on an ugly bridesmaid dress she'll never wear again. (gasps) Oh, the gowns are teal. Oh my god, I look sallow in teal. (laughs) All your out-of-work Broadway pals getting drunk and singing the score from a chorus line. Can't forget, won't regret what I did for love. (laughs) Okay, what about your friends getting drunk and ripping apart the menu? (gasps) I can't believe they're serving crispy sardines with pomegranate and pine nuts. Oh, that's so two years ago. (laughs) If you want, we'll have a big wedding someday. This can't go on forever. I don't care about a big wedding anymore. I wanted to be married today. I can't believe even City Hall is closed. Who knew marriage would turn out to be a non-essential service? Yeah. You know, I remember seeing old movies where the men going off to war and their girlfriends all rushed out to get married before they shipped out, even if it meant they didn't get a wedding. I used to think that was so... Stupid. I mean, why do you want to hurry up and marry a guy who's going thousands of miles away and might be gone for years and will probably end up dead? Why not wait and see if he comes home and and then marry him? But now I think I understand why they did it. Why? For the promise. Not just a promise of love or faithfulness. They were assuring each other that no matter what happened, neither one of them were alone. And in really bad times, I think that's everybody's worst fear, you know, being alone. As far as I'm concerned, you're my wife, and I'm your husband. As soon as we can get the piece of paper, we will. What if being cooped up together in this tiny apartment drives us crazy? I mean, what if we end up hating each other? Then we'll be like most married couples. Oh, can you please be serious? Okay. I seriously love you, wife. I love you, too. Do you really want to do this live stream wedding thing? (laughs) No, I do not. (laughs) Tonight... I'd just like to be alone with my husband. I think everyone invited to the wedding will understand. (laughs) Yeah, I do too. I'm going to let you tell them while I go put on my slutty nurse costume. See you on the couch. Wedding Day was written by Tawny O'Dell and performed by Casey Brevis, and Leslie Margarita. It was directed by Mitchell Maxwell and produced by Lou Aronica and Mitchell Maxwell. The sound design is by Josh Milliken, and Carl Verowerk was the general manager. The song The In-Between was written by Casey Brevis and Sam Shuey and was performed by Alex Blue, Casey Brevis, and Sam Shuey. You can get it wherever music is sold or streamed. For a complete list of credits, visit us at audiodramainitiative.com. The call.
comfort in the closeness of a hand And all the ways we lead each other safely back to land To understand, oh I've never known the forest for the trees 